Brought to you by wikivd.com. The Apprentice UK TV series. The Apprentice is a British reality game show in which a group of aspiring business people compete against each other in a series of business related challenges in order to win a prize offered by British business magnate Lord Sugar. For series 1 to 6, the prize was to become his apprentice and work at his former company Amstrad or one of his other companies, Viglin Amsprop or Amschold, receiving a six figure salary. But since the seventh series, the prize is £250,000 investment towards the business of the candidate's creation, with Sugar as a 50% owner. Rumors of a UK version of The Apprentice were confirmed in early 2004 by Fremantle Media with the BBC successfully outbidding Channel 4 to secure the rights for the show. Billed as a job interview from hell the program operates in very similar format to that of the American original with its creator Mark Burnett producing the UK version. Lord Sugar became the finalized choice to head the program's first series. After the broadcaster's initial choices Philip Green, Felix Dennis and Michael O'Leary turned down the offer to head the show whereupon he returned for subsequent series after this. Despite initial doubts he wouldn't for the second series. Each series of the program consists of 12 episodes and the first two series were aired on BBC Two in 2005 and 2006 respectively, before its success led the BBC to commission more series and move the show over to BBC One. Subsequent series were usually shown in the spring or delayed to the autumn to avoid clashing, with major political and sporting events being held in that year. During the broadcast of the 12th series in late 2016, it was confirmed that applications had opened for a 13th series to be aired in 2017. Since its broadcast, the show has spawned two celebrity versions for comic relief and sport relief. A companion discussion show entitled The Apprentice, You're Fired, that runs alongside every series and a number of special 60-minute episodes, concentrating on the candidates that were fired in the current series being broadcast, or those who made it to its penultimate, final stage. While the program has been compared to another BBC series Dragon's Den, its success has spawned Apprentice-related merchandising including a magazine podcast, and official books while leading other production companies to produce shows that follow a similar format including Tycoon Beat the Boss and Election. Candidate Selection The show's initial stage which is not filmed focuses on open auditions and interviews held across the country. This stage searches for the candidates for a series before filming of it begins which often attracts thousands of applicants. A second round will usually be held in London for a small percentage of applicants who divide into groups and are asked to do various exercises to test their business skills and to gauge how they work as a team. Following this, between 20 and 30 applicants are chosen and given an assessment by a psychologist receiving further checks by the production team and providing them with references before the final lineup is selected from this group. And filming can begin. The number of candidates who appear in a series has varied. Over the show's history though consists of a balanced number of men and women. For the first two series the show featured 14 candidates increased to 16 between series 3 to 9 and later 20 to mark the 10th year of the show before eventually consisting of 18 candidates. From the 11th series, candidates who successfully make it into the show are split into two teams normally by gender, in which they usually pick a team name at the start of the process. The BBC comedy website published a spoof video at the beginning of series 6 revealing more about the candidate selection process boardroom. 
Once a task is finished the team's remaining candidates report back to Lord Sugar at the boardroom either following the task's completion or the day after it has ended. To hear about feedback on the performance and learn the results of their endeavors. The team remaining candidates that have lost the task are forced to return for further boardroom discussions whereupon the prospect of being fired from the process usually results in them discussing, arguing the case for why they should remain, along with who among their group should go. The format of the boardroom is set out in three stages results greater than task review greater than final boardroom with each conducted as such while the boardroom scenes differ for the interviews and final. There are a number of exceptions in regards to the boardroom format after tasks which can occur during this scene. Interviews The interviews stage of the process takes place as the penultimate step of the competition in which the five remaining candidates in the competition each undergoes an individual set of Interviews with this election of trusted aides of Lord Sugar for the 7th and 8th series. This stage was assigned as the final step, and featured the four remaining candidates in each respective series competition. In this stage, each interviewer questions the candidates over various matters. From their performance in the process why they applied for the show the content of their CVs and their personal attitude with others and often probe and scrutinize any brash boastful or controversial statements that they have made including on their application forms and CVs, which can usually see them encouraged to prove such outlandish claims are truthful or were made up, the aim being to determine the suitability of the candidate for the prize being offered by Lord Sugar. Since the seventh series following the change of prize, the interviewers now scrutinize a candidate on their business plan determining how feasible it is. If the candidate can achieve the plan as well as rooting out any potential flaws and issues that come with it. After candidates have been through their interviews and Lord Sugar has heard feedback from the interviewers he conducts a boardroom session to discuss with the candidates over what he has learned about them as well as reviewing their performance on the tasks they undertook. Eventually after discussions, he will determine who he feels has potential to move on to the final, with his decision usually resulting in three candidates being fired. At this stage of the competition, there has only been one instance in the show's history, where Lord Sugar fired just one candidate as the feedback from the interviewers. During the third series competition made it difficult to fire more than one. For series 7, where the interviews was the final task, his decision determined who won the competition. Key, currently stars, previously starred. Final. The final stage of the competition sees the finalists of the process compete against each other in one final task, with the outcome influencing Lord Sugar's decision on who wins the current series competition. Though his choice is determined through a comparison of the two candidates, and is not influenced purely on how successful a candidate is in the final stage, but also other factors connected with them such as their overall performance in the competition, and the overall feedback he has received about them. Whereas in Series 7-8, the interviews stage was the final task prior to these series and after them. The task sees the finalists being able to form a team out of a selection of returning candidates that had been fired. Over the course of the competition their choice is affected by past experiences with them. How well they work together or if their skill set can help improve their chances of winning. For Series 1-6 the final stage was a purely business-styled task, as a final test of a candidate's skill set and their suitability to the job being offered as a prize in these series. For Series 7-8 following the change of prize, the task primarily focused on determining how potential a candidate's business plan was, 
for investment via interviews. Since the night series the final task reverted to a similar format prior to Series 7 though was altered in that the finalists' task is to promote their business idea presenting their proposed plan along with its brand identity to a group of industry experts. In all versions the finalists eventually reconvene at the boardroom in which Lord Sugar discusses with them over their performance. The feedback they got in voices his final opinions of the candidates eventually. He declares his choice proclaiming to the winner he points to with the words you're hired. At which point the winner departs in Lord Sugar's limousine and conducts a brief victory interview. Reflecting on there was success in the competition. While only two finalists ever reached the final stage series four featured four finalists who were divided up into pairs working as joint project managers respectively on the final task, with Lord Sugar effectively firing the pair who performed poorly, and making his final decision on who won between the candidates within the remaining pair. The Board Key, current board members, previous board members Each boardroom session featured in the show consists of the same setup for the board, in the form of a panel that evaluates the performances of the candidates in the competition. Along with Alan Sugar the panel consists of his two personal advisors who are assigned to watch over the candidates during each task of the competition. To date, four people have operated as Sugar's advisors, of which two currently remain a part of the show in this respective role. The following details each member of the board for the first four series. The show made frequent references to his connection with Amstrad, the electronics company he founded and originally called him Sir Alan in reference to his knighthood during that time but since the fifth series, he is billed in the opening credits as controlling vast business empire. Following the sale of Amstrad and his departure from the company while he is referred to on the program as mainly Lord Sugar owing to a politically neutral appointment he had been offered around that time. Since the birth of the companion discussion show Lord Sugar appears on every You're Hired during the time when the winner of the series is being interviewed. Series 1-2005 the first series began in February 2005 with the opening theme being Montagues and Capulets. The viewer ratings climbed to almost 4 million viewers for the final episode on 4 May 2005. The winner of this series was Tim Campbell, who had previously worked as a senior planner within the marketing and planning department of London Underground. After his victory he went on to become project director of Amstrad's new health and beauty division at the time, but left the company to pursue other interests the following year, starting up the Bright Ideas Trust in 2008 which offers funding and support for young people wishing to start their own business. In August 2008, the American cable channel CNBC began to present the first series on Monday nights but it was aired in disparate time slots and not at all due to the network's abrupt shifting of their program schedule in order to cover developments regarding the global financial crisis of 2008-2009 leading to the series not being broadcast in full, with CNBC deciding to focus their prime time schedule on financial news programming the program's rights were moved to BBC America where it started transmission on 5 May 2009. Series 2-2006 The second series began on of February 2006 where this spin-off program introduced on BBC Three to air alongside it called The Apprentice, You're Fired. The series finished, with a record of 5.7 million viewers watching the final being won by Michelle Jubery. Jubery briefly took up a post under Sugar following the series, but left in September 2006 after a series of personal problems.
Series 3 to 2007. For the third series, 10,000 applications were received by the production staff, with a promise made to incorporate tougher tasks and better people. After Alan Sugar expressed concerns that the show was becoming similar in format to that of Big Brother. Alongside this, the BBC also revealed that the programme was being moved over to BBC One and aimed at a more mainstream audience, with the broadcaster subsequently moving The Apprentice, who were fired, to BBC Two as a direct result. The series started on 28 March 2007, with viewing figures of 4.5 million climbing throughout the run to a peak of 6.8 million people all watching the final being won by Simon Ambrose. Ambrose went on to work at Sugar's property company Amsprop including a project to develop a hotel and golfing complex near London Stansted Airport before leaving his employment in 2010. Series 4 to 2008 Candidates applying for the fourth series were invited to do so through the program's official website leading to 20,000 applications being submitted for the series and 16 of them making it through to take part in the show. Its first episode aired on 26 March 2008 with its debut attracting 6.4 million viewers. This climbed to around 8.9 million viewers for the final episode with an additional 800,000 viewers tuning in for the episode's final 15 minutes. To catch Lee McQueen winning the series, Lee went on to initially work for Sugar's company AMSHOLD, where he phoned in sick on his first day and then went on to work for AMSCREN as development director reporting to Sugar's son Simon Sugar before leaving his employment in 2010. Series 5 to 2009 Prior to the start of filming for the series Adam Freeman, one of the lucky 16 that had made it onto the fifth series was forced to pull out. It was stated that his reasons for doing so were due to a family matters. This meant that when the series began on 25 March 2009 viewers got to see 15 candidates vying for the prize, with Margaret Mountford announcing her decision to stand down as a participant of the show. During its broadcast officially confirming it on You're Fired, the series was won by Yasmina C. Adderton, who started a relationship a few weeks later with Andrew Hepburn a fellow development manager resulting in her getting pregnant. She effectively gave her notice to Lord Sugar during 2012 before she was due to return from maternity leave, after she had fallen pregnant again. Series 6 to 2010 Following Mountford's departure, Karen Brady was officially revealed as her replacement on 30 August 2009 later revealing in a newspaper interview on 28 February 2010 that the contestants would no longer refer to Alan Sugar as Sir Alan, but instead must call him Lord Sugar, following his elevation to the House of Lords, because of the 2010 general election being held in the United Kingdom. The BBC opted to delay the sixth series until after it had been held as Alan Sugar had ties to the government at the time, although he stated his intention of maintaining his position in the show. The running of The Apprentice during the general election could have been a risk to impartiality. Advertising of the series commenced after it was held throughout the summer with the opening episode eventually broadcast on 6 October 2010. The series was won by Stella English who was placed into Sugar's company Viglin. In May 2011, she requested a new role after saying that she was just a glorified PA and retained this for a year before it was decided not to renew her contract. The decision drew considerable media attention after she attempted to sue Lord Sugar 
for wrongful dismissal in February 2012 only for the legal action to be ultimately unsuccessful. Her actions ultimately led to change in the show's format and its prize by both Lord Shudger and the production company. Series 7 to 2011 Applications for the seventh series began in April 2010, between the applicants being processed. To the filming of the first task Lord Sugar announced that the prize had been changed, and that now participants of the show were competing for an investment from him of £250,000, with Sugar becoming their business partner owning a 50% share but also providing guidance and support from himself and a team of experts to help develop the winning candidate's plan. Those applying prior to this announcement were not aware of the prize change until later on. The 16 candidates who eventually secured a place on the series were revealed on 3 May 2011, via the official website and in a press launch, with the opening episode aired a week later on 10 May. In a change to format, the final involved the interviews that candidates undertook, though these included a scrutinizing of the candidates' business plans as well. Thomas Pellero became Lord Sugar's first business partner whereupon he used his prize to launch a range of manicure products with assistance from Lord Sugar, including a line of curved nail files, the S-file, the S-buffer and the emergency file two curved nail clippers, the S-Clipper and S-Clipper Mini and a curved foot exfoliator, and the S-Ped which were made available with major retailers in the country. While Susan Ma failed to win the series, Lord Sugar admitted he liked her plan. Later investing into her skin care company Tropic in 2012. Series 8-2012 the eighth series began on 21 March 2012 and was the last to use the format for the task layout as was used in the previous series while it was the first to feature have the finales of both the program and its spin-off or fired combined into a two-hour episode. The series was won by Ricky Martin who used his prize to launch his joint venture recruitment company called Hyper Recruitment Solutions on 23 October 2012 which was designed to deal with recruitment in the field of science. Ricky was subsequently invited back to appear on the 10th series as an interviewer. Series 9-2013 The night series began on 7 May 2013 and saw the format of the task layout reverted to its original approach prior to the seventh series though with the final task amended to focus on the investment prize in which the finalists of the process had to conduct a presentation of their business idea to a panel of experts including branding an advert and answering any questions given about their proposal. The series was won by Leah Totten who used her prize to open her first cosmetic skin clinic on the 22nd of January 2014. Series 10 to 2014 Because of the 2014 FIFA World Cup and 2014 Commonwealth Games, the 10th series was postponed until mid-autumn to avoid clashing with the live coverage of both sporting events. To commemorate the program's 10th year, the series featured 20 candidates, with two of the tasks dedicated towards the items that had featured within them. The series began on 14 October 2014 was won by Mark Wright who used his prize to start an CEO business called Climb Online. The series was the last to feature Nick Hewer, who announced his decision to depart from the show during its broadcast officially confirming it on the series finale during the You're Hired half of the episode. Series 11-2015 Due to the 2015 general election, the show was postponed until mid-autumn to avoid clashing with the political event due to Lord Sugar's ties with it at the time. Because of Hewer's departure, 
Claude Littner was confirmed as his replacement prior to the opening episode of the 11th series on 14 October 2015, though he retained his role as one of the key interviewers of the interview stage. The production staff now focused on applicants who were older and more experienced in business, with the number of candidates taking part now increased to 18. The series was won by Joseph Valenti who used Sugar's investment and assistance to help him expand his plumbing business in Pragas. The pair worked together on developing the business model for two years until Valenti announced in early 2017 that he intended to go solo and would be assuming full control. Both men parted ways on good terms with Valenti thankful for the help and opportunity that he had gotten while Sugar wished him the best of luck and that he would be following the company's progress. Series 12-2016 as before the BBC postponed the 12th series to mid-autumn so as to avoid clashing with live coverage of Euro 2016, the 2016 UK-EU membership referendum, and the 2016 Rio Olympics that were to take place during the summer. The series began on 6 October 2016 and was won by Alana Spencer. Schedule Every series of The Apprentice is pre-recorded before it's broadcast although the show's 12-week broadcast schedule gives the impressions that each episode was filmed over a period of 12 weeks in actual reality. Each series' filming schedule is conducted within a two-month period, a few months before the show is to be aired, while the candidates do have a break between tasks to relax within the large rented house or apartment they are provided for by the production team. For the duration of the competition each task is generally performed, with a much closer time frame that it appears on the program, compared to the US series. The British version has a more rigid format that requires the production team to provide enough footage for each series that is to be then incorporated into 12 separate episodes. Early rules in filming meant that multiple firings were not allowed in the first two series, a fact that was acknowledged as an issue by Lord Sugar when he expressed his desire to fire both Alexa Tilly and Syed Ahmed following a task in the second series, but could only get rid of the former. In subsequent series, this rule was changed after the show increased the number of candidates for the competition, meaning that Lord Sugar could conduct double firings where needed by the film crew as part of the filming schedule. Locations Filming for many of the tasks involve locations within London and across the UK in various cities and towns and on a number of occasions when tasks take the teams abroad across Europe. Northern Africa, the Middle East and the United States, as each series sees the candidates provided with accommodation within an upmarket area of London every episode's opening and ending scene is filmed at this location and involves a mixture of exterior and interior shots of scenes. Filming is also done on site if the candidates are conducting work on a task within the building. For other outdoor shots used as part of the other scenes in an episode, the locations have varied. Between the first and third series, both the show's opening credits and the post-firing Walk of Shame exit sequences were filmed outside the Amstrad HQ building in Brentwood, but from the fourth series onwards following Amstrad sale to be Skyby in 2007. Filming of these scenes are done in front of the Viglan HQ building in St Albans, Hertfordshire, which until that point had been used a filming location for the interviews stage of the competition and continued to do so until 2014 when it was decided to change the filming location to the Leaden Hall building. In addition, between the fourth to night series, the show's Walk of Shame scene was filmed at night. But the 10th series changed the filming schedule to have this done during the afternoon.
For the scenes involving the losing team discussing the loss, the film crew have used two cafes, The Bridge in Acton, West London, and La Cabana 2. In North London, no editing of these scenes is done to make it appear that candidates only enter the Bridge Cafe. Although the show uses footage taken by its film crew for most of the episode shown, aerial footage of various buildings in London is used on The Apprentice mainly to act as small links between scenes and as part of the show's opening credits, and have included shots of the Square Mile and Canary Wharf financial districts as well as the 182 metres Gherkin HSBC Tower 1 Canada Square the City Group Centre and the Shard. Such locations aren't used for filming unless a task involves visiting the site. Candidates Filming of an episode can usually take a considerable amount of time to be done and as such, each task is usually filmed back-to-back -back rather then weekly as it appears in the broadcast schedule for a series. For each episode, four television crews are used to follow the candidates during a task, and often are focused on picking up on mistakes and issues between candidates than on their overall performance. The final edit of an episode often trims down a task that took two three days to be done to fit it within approximately about half of what will be televised for that episode, meaning candidates may appear to make minimal contributions when in reality they made more, while others may not feature as much if Lord Sugar or his advisors feel they did well and completed their duties as emphasis is often put on moments that can be entertaining for audiences. Often the filming of an episode can hamper the efforts of candidates in a task due to film crews usually having to get filming permission first from the respective owner of a store or establishment which can often be a time-consuming and cumbersome process as a result. Whilst the strict rules of the BBC on product placement and advertising mean candidates have to approach businesses with care when asking them for help. Owing to the need for secrecy, during the two months of filming all candidates are made to sign a confidentiality agreement which prohibits all but a few confidants nominated by them to be told of where they will be during that time, which remains active after filming until the series has started broadcast with all contact with the outside world restricted to a high level. Each candidate gets a limited phone call once a week and all have no access to newspapers, television or internet, while any electronic communication equipment they have is handed in before they begin. In addition all candidates are made to remain in their accommodation throughout filming except when they must head out for a task and can only take a day off if they are supervised by a chaperone from the production crew. As a result the persistent presence of the cameras, the closeness of rivals in the competition and the lack of contact with families, can cause considerable pressure and stress for a candidate between entering the process to leaving it. Boardroom, walk of shame, and final scenes filmed in both the boardroom and the reception area that resides next door to the room are in fact done within a custom-built set at Black Island Studios, with the boardroom receptionist actually being an employee of the production company. Talkback Thames and not Alan Sugar's real secretary. Filming of each candidate's walk of shame. Exit sequences is mainly done towards the beginning of a new series which can lead to the fired candidate's clothing and hairstyle being different to that in their final boardroom scene before their dismissal from the competition. The post-firing taxi ride that occurs after their departure doesn't take the candidate home as it appears in the show but merely takes them around the block to allow their taxi interview to be filmed after which they are then taken to a local hotel to stay the night before being finally allowed to leave after packing up their belongings from the house, for the final multiple endings are filmed for the finalists who make it 
to the end of the competition yet Alan Sugar does not reveal his decision about whom he is going to hire until shortly before transmission, which determines which ending is shown as part of the series finale's final edit. Notably, the BBC released two statements in regards to the decision procedure that are considered to be contradictory against each other, while the first states that Sugar makes his decision on the day that the final boardroom sequence is filmed based on the contestant's performance in the final task, and keeps it secret until just before transmission. The second states that he decides after a six-month trial period. Former candidate Syra Khan notably stated that his final decision is not based on the program that people see, but is based on these two people who have been working with him for the six months. The Apprentice, you're fired. Following the decision to commission a second series of the program, the BBC decided to create a spin off companion program to accompany The Apprentice with its format operating in a similar manner to that of Big Brother's Little Brother. And Strictly Come Dancing, It Takes Two, originally aired on BBC Three before it was moved, to BBC Two alongside the main programme's move to BBC One. The show is broadcast alongside the latest series of the main show, with each episode featuring the host and a group of guest panellists business people related to the task presenters of TV, radio programs, and comedians performing an in-depth look into the recent task of the program, while also interviewing the most recently fired candidate and analysing their performance. The shows are recorded at Riverside Studios and is currently hosted by Rod Gilbert. Since the beginning of its 11th series, it was previously hosted by Adrian Childs. Dara O'Brien and Jack D, respectively. The Apprenticast The beginning of the third series saw the launch of a weekly podcast called The Apprenticast, and a radio program on BBC Five Live both hosted by former Blue Peter presenter Richard Bacon, and running for 30 minutes. Both programs featured former candidates being questioned by members of the public comedians and those who work in business. Some critics have described Bacon's performance as better than that of Adrian Childs, who presented the similar but television-based program The Apprentice, You're Fired, for the 2009 series. An independent weekly podcast was also released hosted by first series contestant James Max, in conjunction with London talk station LBC. Young Apprentice As the main program began to grow in success, Lord Sugar took notice of the number of young viewers the show was attracting, and went into discussions with the BBC in March 2008 to propose the creation of a junior spin-off of the show featuring a young age group of candidates and being aired in an early evening time slot on BBC One. Despite a lack of interest, Sugar went into negotiations on the idea in early 2009 whereupon the BBC gave the green light for the project after the idea was revised. In May 2009, while the fifth series of The Apprentice was underway, the broadcaster announced the spin-off's production, during an episode of The Apprentice, You're Fired, with news that it had begun an application process aimed at young candidates aged between 16 and 17. Both the filming schedule and the format of the spin-off differed greatly with the main show with the most notable differences being that Lord Sugar was gentler with the young candidates when firing them from the spin-off. The candidates face mainly standard tasks and no interviews, and the winner received a £25,000 investment from Sugar to fund their further education and future prospects. The first series of the programme began on 12 May 2010 under the title of Junior Apprentice consisted of ten candidates split evenly between gender, 
and ran for a total of six episodes. It also marked the debut of Karen Brady as Margaret Mantford's replacement. After she left the main show following the fifth series, Brady would later begin her first appearance on The Apprentice at the start of its sixth series. The spin-off later led to the BBC commissioning two more series though. With a few changes the show was renamed as Young Apprentice, with the number of candidates increased to 12 and the number of episodes increased to 8. The second series began airing on 24 October 2011 while the third began on 1 November 2012. The spin-off was eventually cancelled after its third series. After Lord Sugar revealed on his Twitter account in February 2013 that the BBC had decided to not renew Young Apprentice for another series. One-offs The following is a list of programmes that were one-offs, alongside specials connected to the main show An Apprentice Special of the Weakest Link aired on BBC One on 30 May 2008. It featured memorable candidates from past series of The Apprentice along with Apprentice narrator Mark Halley replacing John Briggs as gameplay voiceover. Praise The program has been given positive reviews by several newspapers. In the popular press, The Sun newspaper has called it the thinking man's reality show, and The Daily Mirror described it as jaw-dropping viewing. Broadsheet newspapers have given the program a similarly positive reception, with The Daily Telegraph calling it the most addictive show in years, and The Guardian saying that it provided a salutary lesson in aggressive buying and selling, hiring and firing. The Sunday Times said that it was not just a game show, it's a business school. The Evening Standard was also favorable, describing the program as terribly compelling. According to a report released by Ernst, have helped to encourage and foster an entrepreneurial culture across the UK. The report revealed that 71% of entrepreneurs surveyed thought the UK encourages an entrepreneurial spirit. Criticism The programme has been criticised in the British media for suggesting that success in the business world requires possession of unsavoury qualities. Terence Blacker of the Independent newspaper, for example, said that he believed that the programme falsely linked success with being nasty, disloyal, greedy, and selfish. Talk show host Sir Michael Parkinson has also expressed misgivings about the programme describing it as being full of vulgar loud people who for all the wrong reasons are dobbing each other in. The premise of the show itself has been called into question by some members of the business world. Steve Carter, the head of recruitment firm Nigel Lynn, described the brutality of the recruitment process as being unrealistic. None of the winners of the first six series of The Apprentice stayed with Sugar's companies. Over time, some for only a matter of weeks leading it to be criticised as an entertainment show. With no real aspect of business to it while Stella English described the job as a sham. When she took Lord Sugar to court on a case of constructive dismissal that was later unsuccessful. In response to these criticisms a spokesperson for The Apprentice has been quoted as saying, the show isn't designed as a tool for recruiters, but it does highlight and thoroughly test key business skills such as leadership, teamwork, dedication, and strategic thinking integral skills most recruiters are looking for. Former contestant and runner-up Saira Khan has criticized the program because the final two candidates both work with Sir Alan Sugar for a few months before he decides whom he will hire. Khan stated that, Sir Alan Sugar's final decision is not based on the program that people see. His final decision is based on these two people who have been working with him. For the six months, Khan also said that the show is more concerned with giving viewers a rags to riches ending than employing the most able candidate, and that the show promotes bullying in the workplace.
The series has been notably edited afterwards to show the winner in a different light. This has led to some viewers correctly guessing the winner of the series partway through the series. Former contestants Lucinda Ledgerwood and James Max have criticized the tasks on the show as being too heavily sales-focused and designed for entertainment rather than as tests of all-round business skills. A number of people have criticized the show's editing and production methods. Contestants Syed Ahmed and Trey Azam accused the show of dumbing down their appearances for entertainment. Jerry Blackwood said that her boardroom scene was filmed again to make it look better. Alan Sugar himself revealed in his autobiography that the boardroom scenes are edited to create tension. Jokes and light-hearted encounters are cut out and Alan is seen banging the table. Media Watch has voiced concerns over inclusion of company names and products such as Chrysler in the program accusing the producers of breaking BBC policy. Despite these claims Talkback Thames has denied any suggestion of product placement. The show received criticism from viewers during Series 6 after it was revealed that orders placed in the program were not genuine. Runner-up of the 11th series, Vanna Katsumitis criticized the living conditions that candidates live in. Granted they are accommodated in a lavish house. Vanna claimed that the bosses impose living conditions similar to Big Brother with strict rules and zero contact with outsiders. She said they just throw you into a house and tell you that you have no phone, no internet and you'll have no contact with the outside world. You can only talk to your family once a week for 10 minutes and that's monitored. And we weren't allowed to go to Boots to grab something. We had to be monitored and guided there. She continued, I think that element of cabin fever and psychological torture is not necessary for a business competition. I don't believe that you need to isolate people. I think you can gauge people's business skills without putting them in that environment. Varna's criticism of the living conditions that candidates live in which they have zero contact with outsiders was also brought up a year later by contestant Alexandra King who left the process in the fourth task. Following her departure she said, I can't tell you in exact detail how much contact I was allowed with my family but for me the restricted contact was not good enough. I would have liked to have picked up the phone and just said how are you guys? Okay great, I was not able to do that. I've got a 9-year-old, a 7-year-old and a 5-year-old but it's the work-life balance thing. Because there are other mums in there who have younger kids and it was okay for them. But for me, I started to get slightly irritated because I felt like why is this even a business tip? What has lack of contact with my family got to do with it? It was winding me up and going on in my head. King later remarked that The Apprentice includes a blame culture and the atmosphere wasn't necessarily great for business. Viewing figures The Apprentice has received high rating figures in its run. The first series broadcast in 2005 achieved an average of 2.5 million viewers, with a peak of 3.8 million people watching throughout the series. It had an 11% share of the audience and some episodes managed to beat more popular programs, such as Desperate Housewives and some films such as Ali G and A Hose, which were airing on rival channels at the time. Series 2 achieved 4.4 million viewers on average with a peak audience of 5.95 and a 27% audience share. Episodes of this series achieved higher ratings than the 2005 UEFA Cup Final and the film Pearl Harbor. Series 3 airing on the more mainstream BBC One attracted 6.8 million viewers at its peak with a 27% audience share. This series managed to attract more viewers than City Lights Grand Designs and Big Brother. 
Prior to the airing of the third series comic relief does The Apprentice attracted 6.72 million viewers, becoming the fifth most watched program on BBC One the week it aired. The fourth series opened to 6.4 million viewers and the series peaked at 9.7 million during the last episode. The first episode of Series 5 of The Apprentice averaged 8.11 meters. The previous highest rating installment was the opening program of Series 4, which achieved 6.4 meters on 26 March 2008. The Apprentice, Your Fired, garnered 3.01 meters for BBC Two in the 30 minutes from 10 p.m. According to Bob, the 10 highest rating episodes to date are Parodies and Imitations The show has been imitated in the ITV program Harry Hill's TV Burp. It was also mocked in the BBC impression program Dead Ringers, in which Sir Alan Sugar turns fired contestants into frogs, and the candidates are portrayed as failed applicants of Strictly Come Dancing and Big Brother who are seeking their 15 minutes of fame. Rory Bremner did an impression of Sir Alan on the show Bremner Bird and Fortune. He was in the boardroom with the main London mayoral candidates Boris Johnson, Ken Livingston, and Brian Paddock and after each of the candidates failed to get a single vote according to his results, he hired himself for the job claiming he would make a profit on City Hall. In Dead Ringers, Bremner also impersonated a Sir Alan with magic powers castigating a contestant over an event akin to what occurred to the Sorcerer's Apprentice. In early 2007, the show was mocked in the television program Combat Opera Presents the Applicants. The series has been lampooned on the Bow Leg Brothers website where it is shot in Lego. Paul Merton and Ian Hislop also parodied the show during a promotional advert for the 2007 and 2008 series of Have I Got News For You. In June 2007, shortly after the conclusion of Series 3 of The Apprentice, rival UK channel ITV began airing Tycoon described in The Times as a shameless rip-off of The Apprentice. Mark Thompson, the BBC's director general, accused ITV of copycatting and said that Tycoon was very like The Apprentice, and there's possibly a bit of Dragon's Den in there. The series followed Dragon's Den star Peter Jones' search for a new business tycoon. It proved relatively unsuccessful and was removed from a prime time slot on Tuesdays after achieving fewer than 2 million viewers over 2.5 million below the channel's average. The final episode attracted just 1.3 million viewers. The program's winner Ian Morgan won a prize of over £200,000. In the fourth series of Charlie Brooker's Screen White Brooker parodied The Apprentice, with Brooker taking on the role of a sugar-like character dressed in a crown and gown and replacing the catchphrase you're fired with you're fucked. The children's comedy sketch show Horrible Histories features historical apprentice as a recurring sketch. This directly references The Apprentice and Lord Sugar, and features two different teams from different historical periods. Lord Sugar starred in a mock clip of The Apprentice within the 2012 Doctor Who episode. The Power of Three series have expanded outside television, with a number of university student groups recreating local competitions by sticking to the format of tasks. What is known as student apprentice competitions have been hosted across the country in a number of universities, especially in London. Events became so popular competitions joined as regional student apprentice in London and other regions in UK. In 2013 these were joined to form National Student Apprentice, which became a competition bringing together six regions for a national event. Merchandise On 10 February 2005 Sir Alan Sugar released a book to coincide with the first series, called The Apprentice, How to Get Hired Not Fired. 
On 16 February 2006 the book was revised with additional information relating to the second series. An official magazine was first released on 23 May 2007. It includes items about business, interviews with candidates from the program and other Apprentice-related features. The Apprentice has included various pieces of classical and popular music throughout. Numerous pieces from film soundtracks are used as well as music featured in the BBC TV series Doctor Who. Examples of the music used include the opening theme and the boardroom You're Fired and closing credits from The Apprentice by Drew Masters. An official soundtrack was released on 4 June 2007. At the beginning of the first episode of Series 6 the iconic string phrase from the first movement of Gustav Mahler's Sixth Symphony can be heard in one might surmise a numerological nod. Further episodes in Series 6 include an extract from a piece by the French composer and pianist Eric Satie music from the Disney Pixar 2009 film Up composed by Michael Giacchino and a famous extract from Benjamin Britten's opera Peter Grimes. A number of episodes also featured brief snippets of several tracks from The Sims series of games, such as the neighborhood theme from The Sims 3 was briefly used in the last episode of Series 6, and one of the build tracks from Mac and Magic was used in Series 7 Episode 8. In 2009, a DVD called The Apprentice, the best of Series 1-4 was released. YouTube Releases in November 2010 the BBC made the first two series of The Apprentice available to stream via the BBC's YouTube channel. It is unknown whether any future series will be released. Brought to you by Wikivd.com Would you like to know more?